Hi everyone and welcome to this introduction to object oriented programming. For the purpose of this introduction I will be using the Java programming language. Okay, let's get started. Let's say that we want to play with some data related to a student. To do that in Java I can create some variables and I can assign some data to each variable. Here I'm going to create a string which will store the name of the student and I'm going to create four integer variables as well. One to store the age and three variables to store three test scores. Note that I could create an integer array to store the three test scores but for the purpose of this demonstration I'm going to use three independent variables. Now let's say that we want to um, also store data relating to another student. I'm going to create another five variables a string and four integers to store data related to this student. Now that I've got some data in computer memory I can now start to play with the data. Here I'm going to create another integer called bill total which will store the sum of Bill's scores. And I'm going to do the same with Joe. And now that we have uh, some data to play with, I can then start to produce some results. So here I'm just using an if statement with a Boolean expression to produce some kind of result. Now this is all very well and good. But imagine if we have tens or hundreds of students. It's going to get a little bit tricky managing all of the variables related to each of the students. And even if we use arrays to help us, it can still become quite unmanageable. Wouldn't it be great if we could do this? Wouldn't it be great if I could construct a new student object in computer memory, give it a name, and store some data inside that object. I'm going to store a string and four integers, an age and three test scores. And wouldn't it be great if I could do that as many times as I want? For example, I'm now going to construct another student object in computer memory. It will have a different name, but it will also store five variables. The object will store a string and four integers. Now I wonder what this looks like in computer memory. Well, let's have a look uh, at a representation of it. And let's just focus on Bill. So when we type this into Java, this is what happens in computer memory. An object is created. This is a student object. It is pointed to by something called Bill. I'm going to call this a student object pointer. And it stores data. Here we have five object variables. We have a string which is storing the name and we have four integers. One of them stores the age and the other three store um, test scores. Our object will also allow us to use methods to help us play with this data. And here are some sample methods. I've got a method here called getTotal, which will tell me the total score um, of Bill's three scores. I've got another method here called getScore, which would tell me one of the scores within Bill's uh, student object. I could also have a method called setScore, which will allow me to change the score assigned to one of these variables. So this student object has object variables with data assigned 
and methods to help us play with the data. We could then do this in our computer program. I could create an integer called bill total and it will be bill dot get total. I'm using the get total method which is a student method and I'm using it in the bill object which is this one. I could then do the same for Joe's total. So imagine that in computer memory there is another object with a pointer called Joe and it stores all of Joe's information. And I can use the getTotal method to um, reveal the total score for Joe. And I could also do something like this. If bill.getTotal is greater than Joe.getTotal then we will write some code. Okay. Now, there's a very, very big question that looms in front of me while I look at all of this information. And let me try to explain what that question is. How can we get this data here when I construct the new student object in this line of code, how can I get this data into the object? Now part two of this video tutorial series will reveal the answer according to Java.